what is the real function of iridium? I have pens here that I reground myself, writing perfectly smooth, juicy, and uniform without any remaining iridium tip. Okay, so yeah, you can grind and polish your untipped nibs to be just as smooth and uniform as if there was tipping on there. Um, that's, that's not really so much the issue. It's not that the tipping, the metal itself, uh, performs so much differently in terms of, of pen feel. You can grind steel, gold, whatever tipping material to be just as smooth as anything else, pretty much. Uh, it's a matter of longevity. So if you're grinding away that tipping material, it's just not going to last as long having a bare stainless steel nib as you would if you had tipping on there. That's pretty much the only reason why it's there. Um, and if you can go back all through history and you can look at all kinds of crazy nib designs and stuff that, that companies came out with um, that had different kinds of tipping or different shaping or all kinds of stuff. There were some that they had called spoon nibs where they literally just like dented the end of a stainless steel nib so that it made sort of a ball. This was like during World War II times where they had like really scarce resources. So they didn't have tipping and all this kind of stuff. So it would literally just like, boom, like punch out a scoop in the end of the nib. They write pretty terribly and have not held up well over the years, but you know, there were all kinds of crazy things tried. And the, the quality of stainless steel, especially decades ago, was not nearly as good as the iridium, you know, really, really dense, hard alloy. Or, well, iridium itself is an element, it's not an alloy, but the alloy that makes up the modern nib tipping. So iridium itself is a really interesting metal. It needs a little bit of explanation. I did some research and uh, I'm not like an iridium expert here and I'm certainly not any kind of chemist. So forgive me if I'm a little bit out of my depth, but maybe I'll at least pique your interest and you can go Wikipedia it for yourself. Um, but iridium was first discovered around 1803. Um, it's a very, very dense metal and it's the second densest metal on earth next to osmium, I believe. Uh, it's the ninth rarest stable element in Earth's crust. Uh, platinum is 10 times more abundant than iridium, so it's pretty hard to find. In fact, only about three tons are mined and used each year globally. It's not that much in the grand scheme of things. Um, it is present much higher, actually, in meteorites in outer space. Um, there's just not that much of it native to Earth. And it's speculated that basically meteorites years and millions of years ago that crashed into the Earth uh, have basically given us all the iridium that we have here. Um, so it's, it's almost kind of a byproduct of mining for things like copper and nickel and, and gold and other metals. Um, every now and then they'll find a little bit of iridium and they'll kind of like file it away and keep it um, when they're, they're mining for things that are much easier to actually find. Um, <coughs> these days, uh, iridium is used mostly to create smelting crucibles for other metals um, because iridium itself has an extremely high um, melting point and so it's it's really good for heating up other metals and, and using them in the smelting process. Um, it's got a very high heat resistance. It's used for like spark plug contacts um, and in a lot of electronic applications, especially in modern day uh, televisions like OLED screens and stuff like that. Um, these days, because of the rarity and the difficulty in actually working the iridium, since it's such a hot, you know, heat resistant metal and, and so dense and all that, um, it's not used all that much in tipping these days. Even though it says iridium point, you know, on a lot of pens, iridium is, is not a, you know, it's not like it's 100% rhythm on that tip because there's just not that much of it and it's really hard to weld. So these days I think um, you're seeing either some kind of an alloy. In fact, I've, I've heard loosely throughout the pen industry that maybe only 3% of tipping is actually iridium these days um, because there are so many other good alternatives to it. Um, things like osmium, rhodium, chromium, uh, other hard metals are a little easier to work with, a little more abundant. Uh, and so it's not such an impossibly, you know, difficult material to you to find and then work with. Um, so that you're getting, you're getting an alloys that, um, you know, I don't know a hundred percent which tipping has what, it's kind of mysterious and very proprietary within the pen world um, of who uses exactly what tipping. But even talking to nibmeisters, you know, there are major differences in how easy it is to grind certain nibs versus other certain nibs. Um, and in the grinding process, basically all the nibmeisters use diamond wheels because diamond is basically the only thing that will grind these extremely dense metals. So. 
the basic idea behind everything I'm talking about here is that when you're using some kind of tipping material, it's going to be denser than whatever the stainless steel that you're using. Not that stainless steel is that bad, especially modern stainless steels. If you look at Mohs hardness scale, which if you remember that from your science days, you know, you get things like talc and limestone and stuff like that that are really kind of soft. And then you get things like diamond, which is the hardest. Uh, it's a scale of one to 10, roughly. Uh, and so things like that, you're looking at stainless steel is gonna be somewhere in the like five and a half range. And then, you know, iridium is more like a six and a half, okay? And then things like chromium are closer to like an eight. Uh, or maybe even a nine. So you get you get up there, like tungsten carbide is a nine. That really gets up there. <coughs> so you can uh, you can definitely get a better wear resistance by using a tipping material than you can just with plain stainless steel. Um, but that's that said, if you look at, for example, stainless steel nibs that have a stub, right? Like most most stainless steel stub nibs are untipped, right? Pretty much universally. Um, partly because the quality of stainless steel has gotten a lot better in recent years. Um, it's very economical to do that as opposed to these like super rare earth metals. Uh, and then also the amount of surface area that there is on a stub nib, the wear is not going to be as quick as it would be on say like an extra fine or a fine or something like that. Because just this just spreads out the surface area on the page and it's just not going to wear as quickly. So how much does it matter on some of these other nibs? A little bit. I mean, you can grind away your tipping material or have an untipped nib and you can get a few years of use out of it. What's going to happen? Basically, there's friction on the page. Paper, if you look at it microscopically, paper is actually kind of rough. Um, even kind of smooth paper, you can see it's got divots and there's a lot of friction that's created when you're in the process of writing. And that gives you your feedback, it gives you your feel. Um, and so the, um, the friction that is created when you're writing over a long period of time will actually wear away the metal on the nib. And, and that'll happen with all pens eventually, right? Depends on how much you use it and how regularly and so on. The tipping size, the quality of the tipping material um, will all depend on how long it will last, how much you bear down on it, how fast you write, the size of writing that you have, etc. cetera. Um, if you have untipped, steel, then you're going to get a few years, give or take, <laughs> of good use out of it. And then what's going to happen is if you hold your pen kind of in at least roughly the same spot, you're going to take that, tip, that, that tip, which is relatively rounded, and it's going to start to wear it away wherever the paper is, and you're going to get kind of a flat spot, which at first won't really be a problem um, until it gets to a certain point, And then that flat spot is going to actually start to create kind of an edge and that's gonna to start to dig into the page and it's gonna feel really scratchy or it's gonna to start to change the shape. It's gonna broaden up your, your nib size and I'm talking like over years of using the same pen. It's gonna broaden up your nib size, it's gonna wear it away a little bit, it's gonna to start to feel scratchier and you're gonna to need to basically re-smooth it, re-grind it out. Which, if you know how to do that already, you know, more power to you. That's something that certainly you're kind of capable of doing. Even just micro mesh can help with that um, if you have an untipped nib. Um, but yeah, it's still advisable though if you're in grind if you're doing any type of grinding yourself try not to grind all the tipping away because especially if it's already there like just grind a little bit and then leave as much of that tipping as possible because um, you're going to greatly extend the life of your nib by years maybe even decades uh, by having that tipping on there just because it's a more hard wearing metal than that stainless steel that's on there certainly if you have something like gold uh, you're going to want to leave that tipping on there because gold is softer than steel uh, and certainly softer than the tipping material. So if you're practicing any of your own grinding and you are grinding away the tipping off of a gold nib, I mean, it could literally be a matter of a couple of months and you could wear away that spot and create a really scratchy nib. I've seen that happen before and it's not great because then when you need to smooth it out, you're smoothing out and like every few months you're grinding and smoothing and then you're not gonna have much of a nib left after like a year. So I would not advise doing that with a gold nib, but if you wanna do it with a steel, more power to you. Most 
most stainless steel nibs, nibs are relatively replaceable, so it's not necessarily the end of the world, but if you have something particularly rare or vintage or whatever, you just want to be really cognizant of that and try not to grind away any more than you need to uh, because you can't put it back easily, right? Unless you're getting into welding and all that kind of stuff, which is a whole other beast, not easy to do. Cool.